Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make three different Halloween costumes for stuffed animals, plus three bonus ones that you'll have to watch till the end to see. There's a lot of costumes to make, so let's get started! The first costume I'm making is an angel, and I'm making this for a Beanie Boo, but it can be made for any size stuffed animal. Here I have the angel wing pattern I drew, and I'll link it in the description box, along with a bigger one for built bears. I first need to trace it on some thin cardboard, and then I'm flipping it over to trace the other side, but I'm making sure to compare the sizing with my stuffed animal to make sure they're spaced out correctly. Then I can cut this out. Next I need to cover the wings in white paper, or you could just paint them white. Since this is made from a Cheerios box, I ended up covering the colored side with two layers so the yellow wouldn't show through. This does take a bit of time to cut out though, so maybe I should have just gone with the painting. After covering both sides, I'm going to make the feathers out of white tissue paper. I'm cutting out a long strip about an inch wide, or as long as you want your feathers to be. Then I'm folding it onto itself over and over again to the width I want the feathers to be. Of course, if you make this for a Build-A-Bear or something, you'll want to make the feathers way bigger, and I even wish I made my feathers bigger because covering the wings takes some time. Now I'm cutting the end of this rectangle in a rounded shape to shape the feathers. Then I can just glue these onto the wings. Make sure to work up from the bottom so the top straight edges get hidden, and for the very bottom of the wings, I'll show you how I covered those in a bit because I didn't do a great job on this side. I also started covering the middle of the wings even though I'm not sure if feathers are supposed to be there. Then I just cut any excess off with scissors. Now for the other wing, I'm actually starting on the very bottom and cutting only little sections of the feathers to cover these bottom curves. Then I just continued covering the wing like before. This took longer than I thought it would, but once I got the hang of it, it took me about 15 minutes for both wings. If this is way too extra for you, you can always try drawing on the feathers instead, or leaving the wings plain white. Now I need to cover the other side. After that, I'm going to attach little straps like a backpack using white yarn. I've already cut two short pieces of yarn, and now I'm taping one end to the top using a long piece of tape. Then I can bring my stuffed animal in to see how long each strap needs to be, so I can trim the extra off. Then I can just tape the other ends down using more tape. After that, I can try this on and the wings are done! Now the other part we need is the halo. This would be really easy to make with a pipe cleaner or wire, but since I didn't have much wire left, I'm just cutting a halo out of cardboard. I just used a compass to draw my circle, and since this compass doesn't work very well, I just had to eyeball the circle in the middle. It didn't turn out very even, but once I covered in glitter, you won't notice. Next, I'm bringing in some wire that I've bent the end of and attaching that to the halo with some tape, but later I had to reinforce this with glue because the wire was rotating. And now that I think about it, I don't know why I didn't just use cardboard for this. But now I'm just cutting the wire to the height I want my halo to be if I attach it to the wings. If you used a pipe cleaner or a wire for your halo, you could probably just make a headband, and I guess I could have done that too. After that, I can finally cover this in glitter. I'm first brushing it in white glue, then sprinkling gold glitter on top. I knew this was the messier option, but I just couldn't help myself. I love glitter, but it was kind of falling off later, so maybe I probably should have just painted it gold. On the other hand, you can't get this kind of sparkle with anything else. When I was done, the cardboard was kind of bending from the glue, so I had to weigh it down flat with the glue in glitter container. And I didn't end up covering the underside since you won't really see it. After it's dry, all that's left to do is tape the wire handle of the halo to the wings, and then you're done! This is optional, but I had my stuffed animal wear this with her white mermaid cut dress that I made for my second YouTube video ever, but I also do a no-sew dress in my no-sew clothes video, so you can always make that instead. Now here she is with the whole costume together! Even though this one took longer than anticipated, I think it looks so adorable. I forgot to mention these first three costumes were requested by you all, so thank you for these great ideas. For this next costume, I'm making a Minecraft zombie, so for the head, I'm going to be using a tissue box. I'll be honest, I already widened the opening because I didn't have any empty tissue boxes, so I just took all the tissues out of this one, but I will still be using the tissues, of course. Since I'm making this for a bear that's slightly smaller than a Build-A-Bear, I just had to cut out a circle this big, but if you are making this for a Build-A-Bear, you might want to just cut the whole square out. Now, since this is a zombie, I'm going to be covering this in green paper. You can always paint it, but I thought this would be faster. And so I'm first tracing these side panels, so I can cut out four of these and one more square shape for the top. After all my pieces are cut out, I can just use a glue stick to glue these on. Before I glue on this last side panel though, I need to draw out the face. Since this is Minecraft, everything's in little square pixels, so for the eyes I'm drawing two rectangle shapes because they'll kind of be two pixels. I originally just wanted to color this in with black sharpie, but my sharpie isn't as fresh as I thought it was, so later I'm just going to cut the eyes out of some black paper. 
Next, I'm going to use some green paint to make the nose, which is another little rectangle, and you can also use markers for this. But now, using the green paint, I'm going to draw the hairline, which kind of look like upside down steps that kind of flatten out in the middle, and then I can just fill those in. I probably should have continued the hair around the rest of the head, but that's kind of a lot of painting and I've got a lot more cautions to make. Next, I'm going to be painting on different squares of green around the bottom of the face. I was hoping that would give it more of a pixelated look, but this is where it started going downhill for me. So I just had to turn off the camera and fix this by myself, and this is what it looked like when it was finished. Even did some touch-ups with more paper. Even though it kind of looks like he has a beard, and I don't know if the zombies have beards, I just had to go with it. But I still think it's recognizable as a Minecraft zombie, so I just left it like this. Then lastly, I added in the eyes. After that, I set that aside to dry, and meanwhile, I'll be working on the shirt. Since in Minecraft, everything's really blocky, I'm going to be making this out of blue construction paper. It's a pretty big piece though, so I'm first gluing two pieces together. Then I can grab my shirt template I made and just trace this on. I will link a Build-A-Bear sized one down below, but if you need it smaller, you can always just scale it down in your printer. After cutting it out, it should have this little rectangle in the middle, and following the long sides of this rectangle is where you want to fold over. So you should have a shirt looking piece for the front, back, and some blocky shoulders. Now I can try this on, and if that little rectangle is too small for your stuffed animal's head, you can always cut it bigger. To help the sides of the shirt stay on, I'm just cutting a little strip of paper for each side, and then taping one end to the front and one end to the back. That way the shirt holds together a little bit better. Then the last thing I'm going to do is make kind of an illusion of a neckline by cutting this kind of block tower looking shape out of green paper. Then I can glue this in the middle of the top of the shirt. Now the final thing to do is attach the face piece to the head. And after gluing that on, your Minecraft zombie costume is done! I actually don't play Minecraft, so I hope I did a good job and the person who requested this likes it. Next, I'm going to be making the hardest costume of all, and that is the pumpkin costume. It's actually not too difficult, it just requires sewing. So I'm first grabbing a big piece of orange felt, but you can also just use any kind of orange fabric. And here I also have my pattern for this, which is just a rectangle, and I need to cut out four of these pieces. My felt is exactly long enough to cut out three, so I'm doing that first. And then I just need to cut out one more from another piece of felt. After everything's cut out, I'm going to match up the pieces good side to good side, and then sew straight down on one of the sides. And I'm going to do that to both. So now that I have two bigger kind of panels, I'm going to open them up and flip them good side to good side. Then I'm going to sew together one of the sides again. After that, I'm going to lay the whole thing out with the bad side facing up, and then fold over and pin down that top edge. I'm folding it over quite a bit because I need it to be wide enough to fit an elastic later. Then I just need to sew a straight stitch to hold it in place. But before doing that, I'm actually going to do the exact same thing to the bottom edge. You don't need to watch me do this twice, so now I'm just going to sew these in place. After that's done, it should look like this, and I already have my elastic ready with the safety pin attached to it. Now I just need to feed this through to the other side, making sure not to let go of that other end. This first elastic I'm doing, I cut about 17 inches long, but you can adjust it to be shorter once you sew the sides together. I had to try this on my stuffed animal first, and as you can see, I pulled one of these sides of the elastic way out just to get it to the right size. And I've just safety pinned the ends together while I do the other one. Now I need to do the elastic of what's eventually going to be the top of the pumpkin costume. And since this is going to fit around the stuffed animal's neck, I just made it about 14 inches. Again though, I tried this on my stuffed animal first and had to make the elastic a little shorter. But once both elastics were in, I'm going to pin together the sides of the costume, good side facing in, and then just sew straight across there. After that, I can just cut off the elastic and turn it inside out. Now I need to add the armholes, so I'm first trying this on my stuffed animal. I just put some overalls underneath for the pants, but they don't have to wear anything under it. I kind of want one whole segment of the pumpkin facing in the front, so I'm just adjusting it to face where I want. Then I'm adding a little pin where my stuffed animal's arms are, so when I take this off, I know exactly where to put the armholes. To cut them, I'm first making a vertical cut, and then kind of trimming along each side to make an oval shape. Luckily, felt doesn't fray, but if you use normal fabric, you might want to cut the holes smaller and then hem the edges. After cutting both armholes, it should look like this, and the main part of the pumpkin is done. Next, I need to work on the hat. Here I have my little triangle pattern for the hat, and I wanted to make some adjustments for this one, so don't worry if the printable version looks a little different from mine. I need to cut out four of these, so to make it faster, I'm folding over the felt first, then cutting them out. After all the pieces are cut out, I'm going to do the same thing I did for the main pumpkin part, and flip them good side to good side with one another, and sew together one of the sides. After that, I'm going to open them up and flip them good side to good side, 
And here's where I initially planned to sew together both sides, but at this point I noticed this would be way too small. So I had to cut out one more triangle and add that in. So if you make this at home, make sure to do five of these. After closing up all the sides, it should look like this. And before I turn it inside out, I'm going around to all the seams and just trimming the bottom a little bit. As you can see, I'm kind of just cutting them at an angle so it doesn't stick out when I open this up. That helped it look a little more round, but I have adjusted the pattern so the whole thing should be smoother next time. Now after that, I need to add the stem. So you want to cut a strip of brown felt as wide as you want the height of the stem to be. And as you can see, I didn't make my strip very long, but I wish I made it longer so the stem would be thicker. So now I'm just rolling it up, and I tried making the bottom a little more narrow than the top, but it didn't really make a difference in the end. Then I can just sew this in place. It's a little tricky because I'm trying to put the needle in through the center, but just try to secure it whatever way you can. After I fully sewed that side down, I'm not going to cut the thread off. I'm just going to go straight into attaching this to the middle of the hat. So I'm just adding random stitches around the bottom of the stem to secure it, and then I can just tie off my thread. Now the finishing touch for the hat is some green ribbon. I'm cutting mine in half first, then tying it around the stem. Then I'm going to cut each side in half again. This ribbon is the more papery kind that can be curled, so that's what I'll be doing. Make sure to be very careful with this or ask an adult to help you. To do this, I'm opening up my scissors, laying the ribbon on top, and then my thumb on top of the ribbon. And then I'm going to tightly hold that and pull the scissors down, and that should curl the ribbon. And now the hat is done! All the components are done, so I can finally try this on. Since felt is pretty stiff already, the pumpkin is looking nice and full. But to make sure it doesn't get crushed, I'm just going to add some stuffing to the inside. Then I can just add the hat, and it is done! Wait, just kidding, not done yet. I still want to cut out a face to make this a jack-o'-lantern. I'm cutting this out of black felt and I'm just freehanding it. I just cut out some random shapes to make the face. Now after that's done, I'm just going to place these onto the pumpkin. And since felt sticks to itself pretty well, I'm actually not going to glue these on because I want to be able to take them off. But now the costume is finally done. I'm actually going to be giving this costume away to one of you out there, so I'm really excited about that and I'll post more about how to enter very soon. The video is not over yet though, let's get into these three bonus costumes. This next one is as easy as it gets, and that's a mummy. All you'll need is some toilet paper. This is all really self-explanatory, I'm just wrapping my entire stuffed animal in toilet paper. I started from his legs and worked my way up, and once I got to the head I made sure to leave a little opening for his eyes. Then I just secured the end of the toilet paper with some tape. I know this one is pretty basic, but for those of you out there with not many materials to work with, this should be a great option. After securing the end, this mummy costume is done. For the next costume, I'm going to be turning Smushy here into a cappuccino. This works best for tan stuffed animals, but you could always just have them wear tan clothing if you want. I'm going to turn him into a Starbucks cappuccino, so the first thing I need to do is draw out the label. I know I could easily print this, but I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way and just draw it. You can already see my failed attempts, but the first thing I'm going to do is draw a green circle. At some point, it was kind of not working, so I just had to freehand it at that point. But for the inner circle, I'm just going to trace this ribbon holder. It's looking a little rough, but now I'm just going to draw the Starbucks logo onto it. I later realized I was actually copying the old Starbucks logo, and they don't have this outer ring that says Starbucks coffee on it anymore, but I kept it to make sure it's really obvious that this is a Starbucks cappuccino costume. After I've drawn it on to the best of my abilities, I can just cut it out. Now I need to work on the little whipped cream topping. I first cut out a little piece of cardboard to be the base. Then I grabbed a piece of stuffing that is all connected, that's important. Then I kind of stretched it out so it's pretty long. Now I'm going to kind of twist and wrap it into kind of a swirl shape. If your stuffing is not able to do this, do not worry. You can kind of just leave it fluffy and flat like a cold foam or a dollop of whipped cream. But I was able to kind of get that swirl shape, so I'm just pressing it together, hoping it stays in place. Now I'm just going to use a glue stick to glue this onto the cardboard. It's obviously not going to be bonded on there super well, but I'm fine with it because that means I can always take the stuffing off and use it later. The last thing to add is a little green straw, and since I didn't have one, I'm going to make mine out of paper. Here I have some origami paper that I'm rolling around a paintbrush to kind of get that shape. Then I can secure the open side with tape. Now I'm going to try to tuck this into the swirl, and the swirl kind of held it in place so I didn't bother using glue. But after that, we can put the costume together! I'm first taping the Starbucks logo to his back since he lays on his stomach. Then I can tape the whipped cream and straw onto his head. Fun fact, he was actually supposed to be a burrito for Halloween, but I didn't have the fabric I thought I had, so I just switched to a cappuccino. It would be great if you could comment burrito down below so I can see who made it this far. I know this is a pretty minimalist cappuccino costume, but my goal was to make it easy, and I think it turned out super cute. 
Make sure to watch till the outro though to see this with better angles. The last costume I'm going to make is a mime. I think this is the perfect costume for a panda bear since they're already black and white, but I still had her wear this dress from my No Sew Tops video. I wanted to add a little red ribbon around her neck since mimes usually wear a red bandana, but the kind of ribbon I have just was not the best for this so I ended up cutting it off. Next I'm going to cut a little heart out of some red construction paper, and this is going to act as her lipstick to try to mimic the mime's makeup. Now I can just tape this onto her mouth. The last and most essential piece is of course the beret. I've already made this black beret in a previous video, so check that out if you want to make it, it's probably easier than you think. Now the costume is done! And here I am trying to make it look like she's trapped in a box or something. Now that is all the Halloween costumes I made for this video. This video definitely took a lot longer to film, but it was really fun. Also you may be seeing some of these in next week's video, so make sure to come back for that. I really hope you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and leave a comment down below, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Happy early Halloween, and I'll see you next time! Bye!